In this video, we're going to discuss the basic structure of an atom. So an atom is the smallest piece of matter that retains the property of an element. So it makes up elements. And the three parts of an atom are protons, neutrons, and electrons. So I'm going to talk about their location and some of their properties um, in this video. So the nucleus is the center of the atom and it's positively charged and it holds all of the mass. So this picture here is sort of like an iconic picture of an atom. We know now that the structure is not quite like this, but we're just going to use it as an example here in the video. So um, the nucleus is here in the center and within the nucleus there are both protons and neutrons and it contains all of the mass of the atom. Now protons are positively charged particles and like I said they're found in the nucleus and they have a mass of 1 AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit and I'll give you that value here in a second of what that actually is in grams. So again, they are found in the center, and this is what gives the nucleus its positive charge. Also in the nucleus, we have neutrons. However, the neutrons do not have a charge, uh, which is why the nucleus is overall positively charged. They also have the same mass as a proton, which we say is one atomic mass unit. So each neutron and proton, we give sort of a value of one. Now, electrons, on the other hand, they are negatively charged and they surround the nucleus in sort of this electron cloud. And they are so relatively tiny compared to protons and neutrons in terms of their mass that we say they essentially have no mass or zero MU, e, or AMUs. They do have some mass, but it, I'll talk about in a second how small it is relative to the actual protons and neutrons, which is why it doesn't sort of count or make any difference in the overall mass of the atom. So protons and neutrons actually weigh 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th grams, which is really, really tiny. This is the value of one atomic mass unit. Um, however, electrons are 1,800 times smaller, so that's why they are so small that they don't really even contribute to the overall mass of the atom. And the um, electrons, like I said, are located in this cloud. So this is another image of what an atom looks like. And we'll go all into detail in this unit about the arrangement and organization of electrons. So all the elements are found on the periodic table, and each box on the periodic table um, gives us some information about those particular elements. So we've already learned to go from names to symbols, so now we're going to talk about what the numbers on the periodic table mean. So the whole number, each element, so if we look here, the, the periodic table is in order, and there's a whole number up top, it's usually on top. Um, and that's the atomic number. So the atomic number actually tells you the number of protons that uh, an atom of that element has. So the number of protons actually defines what element you are. If you have six protons, you're carbon. If you have two protons, you're lithium. If you have an atomic number of, or sorry, if you have two, you're helium. If you have three, you're lithium. So the number of protons or the atomic number determines what element you are. That number is also called uh, the Z number. So that's how we determine the number of protons. So how do we determine the number of electrons? In this unit, for our purposes, we're going to say that all of our atoms are considered electrically neutral, which means that all the pluses and all the minuses cancel each other out. So overall, the entire atom has a charge of zero. So what that means is that because uh, we can tell the number of protons from the atomic number, we're going to say that we have the same amount of protons as we do electrons so that the pluses and minuses cancel out. We'll talk about what it means when an atom loses or gains electrons, but for now, assume that the number of protons and electrons are the same. Now, the other number on the periodic table is actually the atomic mass. So you see the words mass number and atomic mass here. They're actually a little different. Atomic mass, you can tell on the periodic table, it is not a whole number. And I'll talk about why it's not a whole number. But the mass number is actually the mass of one specific 
atom. So if we were to be able to just grab one atom of carbon, what is its overall mass? Since we know that the mass is a result entirely of the protons and neutrons, and each proton and neutron is worth one, if we add up the protons and neutrons, that should give us the, um, the mass number for that uh, specific atom. So the mass number is equivalent to the protons plus the neutrons in atomic mass units. Now the mass number is also called the A number. So we're going to see an equation like this where you have A equals Z plus N. Z being the number of protons or the atomic number and N being the number of neutrons. So let's just uh, do a really quick example here. So I have, um, I'm going to open up the Alma really quick. So in that example, it says carbon 12.0. So let's say that we have carbon, so I have carbon with a mass number of 12. Uh, and we'll learn about what it means if you've got like carbon with a mass number of 14. Okay, and what that's called. But for now, let's just focus on using these numbers. Okay, so this is the A number, the A number. And remember, A equals Z plus N. So we know that carbon, because it's number six on the periodic table, it has always has the same Z number. It always has six protons. So if we were asked to find the number of neutrons, we could easily solve that. So we would know that for the first one, we have a mass number of 12. We know there are six protons. And so we can just tell by looking here that there must be six neutrons. Okay. Or if we had the carbon 14, we would have 14 as the mass number. And, you know, always going to have six protons because that makes it carbon. So that means in this case, the n number, number of neutrons would have to be eight. Okay, so remember, protons plus neutrons gives you a mass number. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk about what do we call it when you have different numbers of neutrons, um, and what does that mean for the atom.